All right, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take a graph that you've composed in numbers for the iWork suite and copy and paste it into pages and then format it beyond that. So I've got my graph here. Um, I've already built it. I'm going to make sure I select the whole thing. So that is with these squares at the edges. I'm going to copy it by pressing Command C and I'm going to come over into my pages document. And I want to put my graph right here between these two paragraphs. So I'm going to control V or command V, I'm sorry, to paste it. I'm going to resize it by dragging the corner while holding shift to keep it proportionally the same. Okay, so right now there's a lot I want to do with this graph. Um, I want it to have a border and I want it to have a legend. Uh, I do like the placement, but I also want to be able to freely drag it wherever I want to go in the document. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the floating nature of this graph from inline to floating. I'm going to click floating, and then I'm going to click on this tab here and choose none. Now that's going to cause my text to go behind the graph, but that's fine because I can now drag the graph wherever I want to in the document. So I'm going to first start by hitting enter to get the text below the graph, like that. And I now have my graph free floating. So the next thing I want to do is I want to make a border for this graph. And unfortunately, none of that is an option up here. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a shape with no fill, and I'm going to use that as the border for the graph, and I'm going to group it along with this graph. So I'm going to click Shapes. I'm going to choose Square. The first thing I'm going to do is come over here right next to Floating in the ribbon, and I'm going to choose None for the square. I'm going to drag this square until it's about the size of the graph and covers the graph. It's now a rectangle, of course. And then I'm going to come up here to my ribbon and I'm going to choose None for the Fill option. So right now, my graph and my rectangle are pretty much aligned with one another. But the problem is if I move either one, they don't associate with one another. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the graph to select it. As you see right here, I have it. And then I'm going to move out to the rectangle. I'm going to hold the command key and click on the rectangle. And now they're both selected. If I right click or control mouse click, if you're using just the touchpad and you don't have two fingers on, um, you should be able to align the objects center. Okay, so they're centered. And if you press Command, Option, and G, you will group the objects together. So I'm going to undo that real quick. So I press and hold Command, Option, and G. And notice how both of the objects are now grouped together. So now when I move it, I've got a graph surrounded by this nice border grouped together. So they're grouped. If I want to ungroup them, I can press Command, Option, Shift, and G. And that ungroups them. So Command, Option, G groups them. And now the last part of this is I did with my table in the other tutorial is I want to add in a text box. So I'm going to add in this text box. So this will be figure one, determining optimal temperature of lactase. I'm going to select the text box. I'm going to drag it so it's a little longer. I'm going to decrease its size. There we go. I'm going to bold all that font and I'm going to shrink it down to size 10 just to make it a little more manageable. Then I'm going to make sure that the text box is floating and to the right of floating I'm going to select again none. I'm going to drag it down right where I want it in regards to the figure. And then again I'm going to hold command and select the figure which is already grouped with that border and I'm going to again press command option G and now my text box is also grouped with my graph. So I've now taken a graph from numbers, placed it in here, given it a border, and then added a legend, and I've grouped them all together so that they'll freely move through my document. So that's all there is to it.